Good evening, and thank you for joining me for this webinar on informational interviewing. My name is Jody Hammer, and I am the Career Services Specialist with NPCA's Global Reentry Program, which is designed to provide career and transitional assistance to evacuees and RPCVs. So it's my pleasure to be here with you tonight um, to talk about this concept. I love informational interviewing. I love the concept. I love what it can do for you. It's a, as the title really says, it, it really can be a game changer for you. Um, oftentimes when I talk with people and uh, they're doing their job search, they're really frustrated because they're just putting out all these applications after applications and, you know, just working really hard, but not seeing the reward for their effort. Um, you know, there's not anyone, you know, they're not, they're not hearing a lot back. And so that can be really frustrating. So um, this is informational interviewing is a way to um, get more information on certain fields, industries, jobs, organizations. And we're going to talk more about a lot more about that um, tonight, you know, not only how to how do you find people to do informational interviewing with? Um, but how do you prepare? What kinds of questions do you ask? Um, how do you follow up? What can you expect from you know, a, a meeting? What should you wear? All those kinds of things, because um, there, it definitely is an art and um, it's not a difficult one. So I'm looking forward to um, spending some time with you talking about this concept tonight. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. So. What is informational interviewing? So um, I look at informational interviewing as your opportunity to really open the door to opportunity, right? To people that might be very helpful to you in your job search, in connecting with other people, or letting you know where the jobs may be, if you're looking in a certain profession, that kind of thing. People who can give you more of an idea of what their you know, day to day is like, if you're kind of doing that career search. So there's lots of, um, lot, lots of things, and we're gonna talk about some more of the advantages in just a, another slide here. Um, but it really does open doors. And, you know, I, I think fundamentally, it's an informal conversation you can have with somebody who's working in an area that generally is probably of interest to you. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't be bothering to do the informational interview. So um, let's, let's talk about the advantages of informational interviewing. And I've already mentioned a couple of them. Um, it really is such a great opportunity to learn more about, you know, an industry or a sector from, from people who are, you know, in it, right, from insiders, people who know what it's like to be in this, you know, sector, who will know the advantages and disadvantages, right? Um, and that can be super helpful when you're doing your career search. We just did a workshop, was it last um, Friday, on tools for creative career decision making and sometimes you don't know exactly what you want to do, and that's okay. Informational interviewing is a way for you to really explore different fields and sectors, you know, without any commitment, right? Other than, you know, being professional and, you know, meeting with the person and, and um, learning more about these, these areas to see if, boy, this might be something that I really would enjoy, right? Um, it's one thing to read about a career in a book, and it's another thing to talk to an in, you know, in person or in today's day and age, reality, right, is virtual, but hey, it's better than nothing. But, and you can do a lot of networking really uh, virtually as well. And people are oftentimes starved for connection right now. So they might be even more willing to talk with you and, you know, chat with you about their own experience and, you know, their, their sector and such. Um, second advantage, uh, it, it helps you to ex expand your own network, right? So that's important as you're looking for a job, because let's face it, we've done a networking, I did a networking session and you can easily access that on the playlist, the Google playlist um, I'm sorry, the playlist for YouTube uh, for NPCA's uh, Global Reentry Program. And I'll be including actually the link to that, um, to, to that the, the playlist where you can see all of the ones. And it's also on the, our careers pages, um, links and titles to all of the ones that we've done. But we have one on networking where we talk specifically about how important networking is to your job search and, and how to go about building an, a, a strong network um, in a genuine way, right? So that you don't have to feel like it's schmoozing and things like that. Um, it can be potential for, you know, future leads, right? If you play your cards right and you connect with the person that you're talking to 
And, you know, one thing that I want to say before we go any further is I, I think I should have made a slide that just said, you know, like, turn your contacts into connections, right? Networking, you know, turn your, you, you have a contact that you meet, you know, and, and look at networking and look at like the informational interview as this opportunity to help build this relationship, right? With somebody i.e. keep in touch with them, not in an annoying way where you're, you know, reaching out every day, but certainly, you know, uh, we'll talk in the end about, you know, following up and, you know, letting them know where you land and, and things like that. Um, it's really smart to, to keep in touch. And you know what, when you get a job, if you, if you interview with somebody and they're in a company and, and down the line, you get an interview at that company, right? Um, or a company that you talk to them about or whatever, shoot them a message saying, hey, I was just thinking about you today. Thanks again for, for you know, all your help in the informational interview last month. It was so helpful. In fact, thrilled to report, I have a, a job um, interview with the XYZ division. You know, you don't say, tell me what it's all about, whatever, but they might very well say, oh, congratulations, you know, and, and be willing to chat with you a little bit. But, um, but they could possibly put a good word in for you, right? If you were very professional, and um, your, you know, that really struck them. Um, you, you very well could, um, they could, they could put in a recommendation for you. Um, that's how it goes, right? Um, it can get you also on the inside track for future opportunities. You know, they might hear of an opportunity in the future, and if you do stay in touch with them to the extent that they can remember that, oh wait. Charles was here, wait, he was looking for, I thought it was international da, 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 division, it reach out to you. So that's how it is, right? It's, it's building your, your network, right? And your alliance of people, but it's not a one way, right? You can do the same for them. So it could be that in the future, you know, tables are changed and you might have some inside information or connection or experience working at a company that, you know, that they're interested in. So of course you would want to graciously, you know, uh, return the favor there. Um, you don't ever want to approach an informational interview in terms of, oh, I, I managed to score this interview with this person and I want this job. I'm going to ask him for that job or her for that job. That's not the intention of an informational interview. And very rarely, I don't want to say never, but very rarely does a job offer come from an informational interview, right? That's just not what it's designed to do. There are some unique situations that I've heard of over the years where an RPCV went, you know, to a federal employer and they were, um, you know, they were interviewing for just doing it. I'm sorry, they were doing an informational interview, right? And in that, they happened to mention that they had non-competitive eligibility, right, NCE. And uh, in the end of that conversation, the guy said, wait, you, the person that was interviewing her said, wait, you have NCE? And she said, yes. And, and he said, just a moment. And he ran off. And she could see him talking to a woman in the, you know, in the distance, whatever, came back and literally like offered her a job, right? I, you know, that's how easy it can be with the um, non-competitive eligibility. Now, don't expect that out of an informational interview. As I said, that's not the common, but those kinds of things, you know, can happen too. So keep that in mind. Um, this is a slide that I just want to go back and review in a sense for those of you who were any of you who might have been in my networking session. Um, uh, I will be, a, a, and I want to answer a question here really quickly, Patricia, um, will you be sharing the presentation? I will be sharing the, um, you'll get the link to the, the recording that's online um, that is uh, on the Google, uh, on the uh, YouTube playlist. So you'll be able to see these slides and just fast forward to whichever ones that you want, certainly. And then I'll, I'll share other resources that I have that I've taken some of the content from here from. So you'll get all of that in the follow-up email that we generally do. So thanks for asking. Um, so with networking, it really comes down to, you know, before you can really think about informational interviews, you, you have to have people that you could do them with, right? It's not going to help you if you have a, a network of zero, and obviously none of you do. And being RPCVs, you probably have a pretty expansive um, network, or much more so than you might even realize. So um, the the you know build your network up, or if you're just coming back, you know build it back up, right? Um, and by that I mean you know reconnect reestablish you know your previous connections whether that was groups you belonged in you might want to rejoin groups of interest to you um, your alumni associations right your alumni um, you know where you went to school that's a great one oftentimes they have assistance available for you as well right 
um, you know, it, looking at, and you obviously look as well at expanding your connections, right, through research. And we're going to talk about, I mean, I have another slide here that we're going to, that we're going to show here in a minute that I would recommend that you take a screenshot of the next slide, um, because this is an activity that you can actually do to help you think about who is your network. So, and you want to use social media to expand, you know, your, your prospects, your, your number of contacts that you could reach out to for potentially information, things like, like that. So um, we'll talk very briefly about that, but we do have an entire session on that again, if you, if you need. So this is the screen that, that uh, the right side where it says, know your network. Um, that's the one that I would recommend if you can just take a quick, um, you know, screenshot of that. And then you can sit down on your own at your, you know, at your leisure um, when you're, you know, doing your job search or thinking about what's next or whatever. And you can fill in a little bit of that, you know, that that is, you know, know your network. And this is just a little bit, right? You have your Peace Corps family, right? Your RPCVs, not only from your country of service, but all of those who've served around the world, most of them are pretty open to connecting with other RPCVs. So that's a huge one, right? Your university, as I said, you know, whether it's high school and or, you know, uh, college, um, your family, you know, your family, people, your brothers, you know, your siblings, your, your parents, your, you know, cousins, they may know people and they may actually be even doing what you're interested in. So tapping, you know, them as well. Um, professional associations, those are great. You know, when you're on LinkedIn, if you join any of those groups, it puts you in a different status with other people who are in that group. So you can send, you know, your messages a little bit longer um, when you don't know them, you know, when you're trying to introduce yourself, things like that. So there's, there's tons, right? I mean, there's, there's just, you know, friends, right? And, and former employers and then others, like what are some of the others that you can think of that I didn't put on here, but that might qualify. Just drop your answers in the chat box. If you can think of any other one, um, you know, there's so many, so many areas that you can network within and and i will tell you the world of you know the internet and linkedin and all of that you're going to be amazed when you start doing your searches and such um that you can't even like you know you put in your, your search and like oh my gosh i didn't realize my friend whoever that you're just maybe not in touch with that often is now working at you know, fill in the blank whatever that you know you just you never know it's so you know people are changing and people change careers and such um as well so um, that helps you from a, you know, mining contacts kind of perspective, right? So um, I think we've covered most of, uh, most of this here on this one. So let's go ahead and um, go to the next slide, which is talking about LinkedIn um, for the possible contacts. And I'm just going to say very briefly, I'm going to recommend that you do what, I, what they call the people search, where, and by the way, I think you can get absolutely everything you need out of LinkedIn in the free version. So I really, truly don't think you need to pay that the money. It's quite expensive um, per month. And I really don't, it's not like you can't get a job without having the, the you know, paid version. Now the premium version does have some nice little perks, right? There's no limits on the number of people that you contact, um, you know, per month, you know, whereas under the, under the free one, they'll give you it where there's a limited amount, but you can get around that in different ways too. Um, there's a really good uh, webinar on using LinkedIn to increase your network in the job search that's done by uh, Dr. Rhonda Anstead, who is also going to be on with me on Wednesday again for our monthly career Q&A for our podcast, where we're going to take the questions from you, uh, the audience. So we would love, and, and if you have any questions for that you can think of, please, you can also drop it in the chat box here. Um, if it's on different aspects of the job search, that's not you know, um, not this this area right here in professional interview. I would love to address any and all of those. So thank you. Um, but on, um, she has a really good session where she talks a little bit about how you can get around some of those limits of how many searches you can do and is it gonna count against you once you find your, um, your like results. If you, instead of clicking on them, if you copy and paste the URL into a different window, it won't count against you or something like that. There's some unique things that you could do that are really great. Um, so even more so, you wouldn't need the, um, the premium version. Now the premium version is nice for employers, for recruiters in particular, because they get some fancy extra, you know, things that makes their job, you know, easier. Um, but really you can do it with the, with the free uh, version. Now for some people, what you might wanna do is take advantage of the one free month that they offer you, make sure it's in a month that you can really do a lot of networking and get the contacts for at least. 
Um, and then, you know, use that free month, but just remember to cancel it before the end. Otherwise, it, it charges you for that next month. Okay. Um, great. Um, so you can put in on LinkedIn when you go in under your LinkedIn and you just go to the little search bar and you see, you know, it'll say like people search or, you know, your search all filters and you can show all filters. But the ones that I really care about generally that I advise people to use in, in doing, in looking at, um, you know, in trying to do a, a, a search is the former employer and the current employer. So let's say you're trying to work for, I don't know, the National Science Foundation, let's say. Um, and so you would go in, you would put for former employer, you would put Peace Corps. You're trying to tap into your Peace Corps network. Those who used to, who are returned Peace Corps volunteers or who worked at Peace Corps at any time, who currently also work at your, your industry, your, your industry or your um, organization that you're trying to find somebody at, National Science Foundation, whatever. So it'll boom, it'll show you if they're your, you know, first degree, second degree, you know, first degrees, you're already connected, right? Second degree, you know, somebody they know, and it's this whole thing, and then third degree and beyond. Um, but uh, you can certainly find people that way usually. And um, the important thing when you reach out to try to ask for a, an informational interview is, you know, when you first connect with them on that platform, just connect on like the, your, your Peace Corps status, for example, or maybe you do a different one that's on your alma mater, right? Where you went to undergrad. Oh, it's great to see another, you know, Howard University grad, alum from, you know, da, 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 whatever. So you, you connect on that in your, and then I'd love to connect with you um, professionally. And that's it. You don't, you don't ask them for time yet. You don't ask them whatever. You just ask them to connect. And them connecting with you alone is great, right? And then once they do connect with you, you can reply and say, thanks so much for connecting with me. Um, you know, as mentioned, I'm an RPCV having served in Ecuador and I'm new to the area and really exploring opportunities in the fill in the blank sector, you know. Um, wondering if you might have 15, 20 minutes of your time to chat a little bit about your own experience and any tips or advice you might have for job seekers in this area. That's a pretty low, right? That's not a, that's not a stressful conversation for them. In fact, most people, let's be honest, most people love to talk about themselves. And so to have that opportunity of somebody who's like, I want to know about you. I want to hear more about your own experience and tips or advice. People love to give advice, right? So if you, if you couch it like that, you're going to have much more success. Make sure that you, you stick to whatever you limit. You know, if you say you're going to, you know, if you ask for 15 to 20 minutes, at least offer at the 15 minute, you know, or whatever, say something like, goodness, I realize that time flies and it's already been 15 minutes. I'm totally fine with wrapping up in the next five minutes if you need to. And they might say, oh no, I have, I have 10 more minutes. That's fine. And, and, and but they'll, they'll leave thinking, wow, he or she was so, you know, thoughtful of my and respectful of my time. Like those are the kinds of impressions you want to leave on them, right? Because if you leave them with that impression, it's, it's a positive connection that, that hopefully, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a positive contact, I should say, right? That, that then has more likelihood of becoming that stronger connection, right? And, and lasting into the future, which is great. Any questions right now on, you know, LinkedIn, you know, as that, or other ways to find people who um, would be willing to do, you know, these, these uh, informational interviews or what I'm going to call it in a moment in my new slide. Any questions? If you have any, please drop them into the chat here. Boy, that chat is awfully quiet here. My goodness. Is everyone there still, I hope? Can you hear me? <laughs> All right, give me a little thumbs up, someone. <laughs> All right, so let's go. Um, and LinkedIn obviously is huge, right? I mean, I think it was 60 million, you know, users. It's it's absolutely changed the face of you know the world in so many ways. Um, and it's more of the professional connection, not that you can't connect through Facebook and some other ones, but LinkedIn is it's literally designed to be a professional platform. So um, Rachel has a question here. Thank you, Rachel. Is it best practice to reach out to people within your network 
Or can you also do a general search for people that have the job you want and then reach out to them? You can absolutely and should absolutely do both, Rachel. I, there's nothing wrong with going outside. When I said do a you know, people search with LinkedIn, that's assuming you're not, you're not using anyone you know. You're like putting some criteria in there that's, you know, that you have in common. And then you're looking for their, where they're working now so that you can hopefully have something to build on easier. But absolutely, you can, you can you know, do a general search and you know, find people who have the job that you want. And don't be afraid to ask your friends sometimes, hey, does anyone know? somebody who's gone into whatever you know contracting for blah 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 or consulting people will be willing to usually say oh yeah my cousin my whatever and they'll you know connect you so you know use both all sources that you can to get these opportunities thanks for the question rachel so informational interview like that doesn't exactly roll off the tongue and it sounds let honestly i think it sounds kind of cumbersome right I'd like to do an informational interview. It just sounds so blah, 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 right? But a career chat sounds a lot lighter. Um, you know, it's, it, it's still the same thing. It's, you know, I would love, you know, 15, 20 minutes of your time at your convenience to chat with you a little more about your, you know, your own experience, da, 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 da. You know, you can use say career chat instead of informational interview, right? And um, yeah, I, I just like that. So I'm gonna probably interchange, go back and forth between the two just because we titled it informational interview, but I much prefer career chat and people know what that means. Oh, you wanna chat about my career or you know what I do or that kind of thing. So, um, so I, I just find that that works more and it doesn't sound so long. Informational interview has the connotation like, oh gosh, I'd love to help, but I don't have you know an hour. It, ha it has that like, it's gonna be long. It doesn't have to be long to be effective, right? So, so you've done your, your, um, you know, you've, you've mined the contacts and you've, um, you have the, during the career chat, you want to make sure that you arrive on time, on time, sorry, uh, not late or early, too early. You can, you can, you can, uh, you can arrive a little bit early, but if you arrive a half hour early, that's stress on them. They're doing something else, chances are, and you don't want to put them in a situation where they feel like they have to drop something to come to you. That's not going to put you on the right um, foot that you're going to want to be on. Does that make sense? Um, and then respect their time. Like I said, asking for, you know, you, you stay with the time that, you know, you had asked for, or at least offer to, and then they can, you know, they can tell you that's fine. No, it's, it's, it's all right. Um, ask intelligent questions that aren't easily answered in your research, right? Um, don't waste those, those precious minutes when you're talking about 20 minutes, you know, or even a half hour, that's not a lot of time, right? You want to be, if you want to get as much information as possible, come prepared with your list of questions, intelligent ones that, you know, do your homework, right? In the prep, um, when you're, when you're preparing for it, make sure that you, you know, do the research, research the organization, the person, definitely research the person. Look at their, like, what is their job history? Where have they been? Look at their LinkedIn profile, right? Find out. And from that, oftentimes you can even come up with some really good questions. So instead of, you know, asking them, so tell me about yourself, like, you know, that can give them the impression that, oh, wow, they haven't done any research on me. Okay. Whereas if you say, you know, in, in my research and preparation for this, this meeting, I'm really impressed by your background. I, I love the fact that you moved from XYZ sector to here. And, you know, I'd love to hear a little more about that sector change and how you made that decision and, you know, things like that. It's where it's more, you know, it's, it's just, it's smarter, the smarter questions, right? So, and, and read their body language right? If they're getting antsy and they're looking at their phone, they're looking at their, their watch or whatever, you know, make sure that you check yours to see what it was and thank goodness, you know, I, I, I know how busy you are and I'm certainly, you know, fine if you need to, you know, wrap this up, whatever, um, you know, use that body language. And then you can certainly use that if, I mean, if you're on the phone, you can't, but you can use sometimes, you know, the awkward silences or whatever. Um, but hopefully you can do at least a Zoom. So, okay. So let's, uh, let's go on any more. Okay, are there networking sites like LinkedIn, but for federal employees? Oh, good question, Welton. Uh, actually, there are, there are not any direct ones that I know of. I mean, there's GovLoop, which is for federal government. Um, I would definitely check out GovLoop. They have some very good resources also for like the job search. But once you become a federal employee, also GovLoop does a lot of things. In fact, they have some big conference, I think, coming up 
this week or next week, but there, there, there probably is like a fee for that. But, but um, there's nothing, I mean, LinkedIn itself crosses all the spectrums, right? I mean, like, so LinkedIn covers federal, you can certainly put in federal employer names and you're going to get who they work for. Cause it, you know, it works from the titles that they're using in their, you know, in their entries. And so it's fine for either. Um, but, but definitely check out, like check out GovLoop as well for just some, some information. If anyone, GovLoop, exactly. Yep. GovLoop. Um, that's exactly how it's spelled. G-O-V-L-O-O-P. And I think it's, for some reason, I don't think it's .gov. It's like GovLoop. I, I want to say it's weird, like com or maybe it's org. But um, you'll find it if you do a Google search, I'm positive. And if you don't, let me know. Um, so career chats, you know, when I was saying, like when you're when you're setting them up and you're you're conducting them, you know, limiting it, you know, generally, you know, 15, 20 minutes, you know, respecting that. Um, reset the context because a lot of times people agree to a meeting and then maybe it's like next week and they are busy professionals. I mean, we all are, right? So you're running and you're doing all your stuff and all you all they might have on their on their, you know planner is your name and and they're like oh who is this again right so so you know reset that context but maybe even you know you might even drop you know drop them a line you know a couple days before if the career chat is going to be like you know a week or two away to say i'm so looking forward to connecting with you briefly to learn more about your experience just wanted to reconfirm that this thursday september da 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 at two o'clock still works for you you know that kind of thing now where do you meet um, you know, whatever is easiest for them is what I usually say. I mean, it's fine to meet at a coffee shop that's close by, whatever. Other people might be like, you know, that's going to take me longer to get there or whatever. They might prefer for you to come to them. And guess what? If they want you to come to them, don't push yourself on them. But if they want you to, boy, that's a huge bonus it can be. Because then you're inside. You're seeing the organization, right? From the inside. You might be introduced to somebody else. Oh, this is my boss. I'm chatting with da 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 she's also an rpcv whatever you i mean that is golden those opportunities but you don't want to say i'll come to you what you could say is something like i'm very flexible with you know where you'd like to meet if you'd prefer a coffee shop near your office or you know i'm happy to come to your office obviously non-covid times um but uh that kind of thing so you can certainly leave it up to them and then they can they can you know rest. some people will want to get away from their maybe desk and get somewhere you know off site other people would rather have you come so Great. And then just reminding them when you do get there, you know, resetting that context, like, were you connected through a mutual friend? You know, you, you might say, gosh, I'm so glad that Bob Michon connected us. Bob is a very dear boss, uh, former boss of mine. And, you know, oh, right. That's how, that's how we got connected. It's, it, it sets kind of a, a connection, right? It makes you kind of one step further onto that connection and, and uh, that continuation of that. Okay. Um, I already covered the come prepared with questions. Um, now networking, politely asking for contacts. And I have actually some questions at the end here. We're going to discuss some other ones that you might have, or you might think of, or want to, you know, run by me. And you're welcome to put those in the um, chat box. If you have questions that you, you, you want to see if it's okay to ask, that's absolutely fine as well. Um, but contacts, you don't, you want to be really sensitive to how you ask for this. So what I generally recommend is, you know, when, um, you know, when you're closing up and you have like, you know, the final questions, you know, um, I would say something like, if you were in, like, try to bond yourself, right? If you were in my position right now, doing a job search in this difficult environment, who are the two or three people or organizations in this sector, in this environment, who are the two or three people or organizations that you would connect with? So you kind of throw it back to them, right? And that allows them to give you some advice and say, oh, well, I would definitely check out. Now, oftentimes they'll give you more, less people's names. They'll more, you know, they'll more, oh, check out FH, FHI 360. They do great work and this, and they'll spit out these things. Don't stop them. You let them spit them out and you just take notes. Like you just write them down, those names. Wow, great, great. Let them go until they're done, right? And then once they've answered that, your follow-up question, and this is the kicker, you say something like, wow, this is a really great list. I'll definitely check into these. I'm wondering, do you by chance know anyone at any of these organizations who might be as gracious as you've been to spend 15, 20 minutes of their time chatting about their own unique experience? So there you go. You've asked for contacts without having to say, do you know anyone else who can help me with my job search? Like that's, that's hard, right? That's a harder sell. 
So that can really help as well. So it's all about the like wordsmithing and how you do it and just being very professional and very, you know, just courteous um, as well. Okay. Any other questions coming in here? I don't see any uh, more yet, but please feel free to put them in and I'm going to go ahead and go on to the next slide and I'll take whatever questions you have um, then. So some of the questions for the career chat, right? Obviously things like, you know, what do you like most? And what's the biggest challenge, you know, for in your position or in your industry or this sector, that kind of thing. Because you want them, you know, you want to talk about what they really like and what, what's great, but also what are the challenges? Because let's face it, some of those challenges may be deal breakers for you. You know, maybe it's an industry where, well, you know, <laughs> say goodbye to your night time, nights and weekends because it's the kind of job that's, and maybe in your world right now, what is most important is having that family life balance um you know and, and all of that so it can it can really give you some good information to go from and don't just take it from one person and let it completely like skew you away from an industry like let's say you had even a negative kind of career chat and it just wasn't very positive it wasn't very helpful don't let that alone one alone scare you away now if you do three or four or whatever and you're getting the same kind of stuff then i'd be more like well you know these are things to think about and i need to think seriously about this if i really want to you know do it um so and these other two here I, I just said to you you know just a few minutes ago but here it is in writing for you to you know look at you know the you know if you were in my position looking to pursue the field who are the two or three pe people and always say people or organizations you would connect with give them the option sometimes they'll say oh jane smith that if blah, 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 is great and she's wonderful well chances are they probably know her if they're speaking so highly of her right so then you can come in with that you know wow that sounds great you know, do you think, you know, Jane da, 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 might be as gracious as you've been to, to spend a little bit of time? It sounds like she'd have really good insight and, you know, something like that you could say. All right. Um, and then what other ideas? What kinds of questions are you using for your career chats? I want people to put in here, what are some of the uh, questions that you're using, that you're asking them? Rachel, Welton, Ashley, Billy, there's the ones I'm seeing right here higher up here so anyone mine are very specific to the person says ashley that's great that's great and that's probably that shows that you've done your probably your research as well right um you know specific to the person what they do right how they got into it their path their career path it's it's a great question too to say you know looking back you know hindsight's twenty twenty. if you were to look back in the mirror you know and and, and it's been you know you have 20 years of experience you know in the blah 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 what is one thing you would change or is there anything you would change and if so what um, about your career path and then you know you, you can get some of those good things too right um anyone else have any uh, let me tell me that you're doing please tell me you're doing informational interviews i hope or career chats you know all right um awesome welton says when i was looking i would ask about the person and the work they do etc as well as more about the field. Excellent. Well, and that's exactly what you want to do, right? Um, those are all great questions. What you want to be sensitive to is salary. I know a lot of people are trying to get in a sense of salary when they're going to certain jobs or certain positions, and you, you know, are lucky enough that you get an informational interview or a career chat with somebody working in that in that you know sector. It's there's no easy way, right, to talk salary with to say so. What's the salary? Like, yeah, that's going to be you know considered rude, right? Now you may be able to say, you know, for how would you say the the you know the the, the salary for somebody with my background and whatever would compare to other you know in the field? Is it you know or or is there a general? Do they have a general range that they start with? I mean, you maybe could tiptoe around it a little bit, but you want to really keep it far from asking or having them even interpret it as you wanting them to share their salary, because that's just not uh, kosher. So um, any other, let's see, um, Patricia, good. Is it appropriate to ask for their advice on how your past experience or skill set transitions into the sector that you're interested in or specific job titles that may be a fit so asking their advice on how your past experience or skill set transitions into the sector absolutely now one of the ways i would probably do that is i would probably ask them or maybe maybe first share you know from my research 
it seems like this is the skill set that's being asked for, you know, in, um, you know, in, in this industry or whatever. What other skill sets that maybe I haven't mentioned might you think are important? And then you could, you know, follow up too to say, now I come from a background in accounting where, you know, it's, it's not project management, but it's very much money, da, 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 da. Would that seem to be a transferable skill? Or do you know anyone who's maybe come from it from that? aspect or that background you could totally do something like that um, and asking them for what kinds of job titles that's a great question because you know what it's hard to know what they call different positions in different companies it really does depend so that's an awesome question patricia um great uh welton let's see you have a question here i have a question i'm about to start a position for a federal agency wow great i'm excited for it but the job description is limited and the people i know in related fields can't tell me much okay part of me thinks it's because of the nature of the work but i'm also thinking not many people are in that field situations like this how do i get more insight on what i'm going to get into okay so my question you say you're about to start so you've accepted the job and you're just going through clearance maybe like top security it sounds like maybe um yeah okay so is it top security that you're getting so you're just waiting on that coming through um yep yeah, yeah okay and that can take some time as you know but um, but yeah, I think in part your your inability to maybe get quite as much information is oftentimes in like the security fields, right? Um, you you have a lot more. There, there's a lot more, well, secrecy, right? There's there's a lot um, there's a lot more that has to be kept private, and so it is harder to get people to talk about their work, right? I know people who work in you know some of the um, some of those areas and it, you, you know, you can be really good friends with them, but it's hard, you really, it's hard to know what they do per se, because they can't talk about it. And, and, you know, you don't want to ask them and put them in a situation where whatever. So it's, you know, but, but we just go, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, so, so congratulations. That's great. Um, it, it, it probably is harder to get information than to just from like research because they don't put as much on what they do out there. Like some of it's very secretive. Uh, for, you know, security, for, you know, uh, diplomatic security or whatever, those kinds of things. So, um, yeah, that's going to be harder, really. Um, you know, you'll, you'll know when you, when you get in there. Um, when, when you did the job interview, did they give you any, um, probably not as much of an idea, or was it, was it pretty blanket, kind of, you can put it, um, you can put it in the chat box. It, 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 it's hard. I, sometimes they don't give you as much and you have this like job description or even your title that you're like, what does that mean? You know, and that's not just in the, in your area, in the top secret, you know, clearance area and stuff, but um, in other, you know, in other areas as, as well, where you get this weird, you know, especially federal government, it seems um, these weird titles that you really don't know what it means, but, but congratulations. That's, that is excellent. Good for you. Um, okay, kind of vague. You're saying, yep, I thought I did bad on the interview and moved on, but got the offer about two weeks later. Well, good. Well, you obviously did much better than you thought. And that goes to show you, Welton, that we're oftentimes our own worst critic. So good for you. Kudos. That's, that is absolutely awesome. I'm excited to hear that. So it's always nice to see people getting jobs that I think it can help inspire others and let them know and keep them Keep the faith that, you know, you're moving in the right direction. And, you know, I know it's hard when you get the no's, um, but every no is one step closer to a yes. I know that sounds trite, but um, it will come through eventually. Um, sometimes even harder is when you just don't hear back, I think. You know, it, 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 when you don't get that answer, you just want the closure and you, you should get the closure, but you don't always. Unfortunately, even in federal, you're supposed to, but sometimes it takes, I mean, months and months and months if it ever comes. So um, just know that, you know, do the best that you can. And then, you know, at some point you move on and you, you know, you learn from your, your mistakes as well. Or when you say you, you, you didn't think you did well in the interview, learn from that and take notes from it so that you know what kinds of questions they asked you and what you should be prepared for so you don't forget. So. Um, wonderful. All right. And Karen, you're saying it's kind of hard. It's hard to be patient, but if you're too pushy for info, you can out them. You can put them off. Exactly. So chill if you can. Uh, yeah. Karen was saying that. Yeah. To me, to share with everyone, you know, try to chill if you can. You'll, you'll find out lots when you start. Um, and yeah, you, you just sometimes have to just take it for what it is and, and realize and say, you know what, I'm going to find out. 
and I'm going to do my best and I'm going to do my hardest, you know, work and all of that. And if it isn't the right fit for me, I will look for something else. So, okay, great. So after the career chat, you always want to send a thank you note, right? Um, and email is, is the, I would definitely recommend sending email, um, at least email, right? If nothing else, you're going to do the email one because that gets there timely and you want to do it within, I mean, when I say, when you're talking for regular, like, um, job interview, thank yous, I'd say do it within 24 hours, right? Like get it off when it's fresh, then they see that you're committed, you're interested and, and they get it timely. Now, if you really like the job, you could even wow them by, sending um, a, a handwritten one that doesn't say the same thing, but just, you know, once again, wanting to thank you so much for da, da, da. You know, I, you know, it really served to reconfirm my interest in, and whatever, the fit for this position, I'd welcome the opportunity to, you know, whatever. And, and you send them that, then then they get that hand. Now, nowadays the mail's not so reliable, but usually, you know, it would be what, like maybe three days later or five days, depending where it's coming from. And then they get this and they're like, oh my gosh, wow they're really interested and it, it just, it brings your name back up. So that can be a little tip that I give to some people. Okay. Um, but definitely do the email one. And one thing that you, um, when you, when you meet different people, like with a, with a, an informational interview, you know, who you're connecting with, right? So you know how to address them and their name, their email, cause you've reached out and connected and, you know, done the prep. But when it's like a job interview and it's a panel, you want to try to get the, you know, can I, you know, in the end, a nice way to do that in the very end as one of your final questions is, you know, when they say, do you have any other questions? And you don't, you've already answered your, you asked your, you know, two or three, whatever. Um, you can say, you know, I, I think you've, and between the job description itself, letting them know that you've read it, right? Between the job description itself, what you shared with me today and the research I've done in preparation for this interview, I really feel I have a solid understanding at this point. However, if I do have remaining questions, how might I reach you directly for that? And they can give it to you. Or oftentimes they'll say, oh, you know, the person at the front desk will get you our, you know, emails or whatever, but you can just ask nicely like that. And then, then you can personalize um, your response, right? And have their names instead of just, you know, please share whatever with the rest of the panel, which sometimes you can do too. And that's okay. Um, you know, that, that works too, but okay. So we are officially at the Q and A and we have 13 minutes left if you have questions. And if you don't, that's absolutely fine. But at this point, I would like to invite you to, you know, a, we're a small enough group. Honestly, I'm fine. If you want to unmute yourself um, and ask your question, um, you could certainly do that as well. And then please keep in mind as well, if there are any career questions, doesn't have to be on this one, throw those in the chat box with whatever the, t the subject is, resume writing or, you know, interviewing or whatever it is, um, networking. And we'll be sure to try to work those into this Wednesday's um, career uh, Q&A, career chat Q&A um, at 12 o'clock Eastern time when we do the podcast. It'll be myself and Dr. Anstead, um, much as we did last month, so. Uh, let's see, Ashley is asking, how much would you recommend keeping in touch with contacts without seeming clingy? Great question. You don't want them to forget about you, but sometimes there's no point to contact them either. You're right. And, and it's a fine line, right? You don't want to be like contacting them every week, every, you know, whatever, that's going to be too much. But when you're, when you're doing that informational interview and you learn more about them, you're going to learn about them, right? Oh, I'm passionate about, you know, monitoring and evaluation, or you learn what they, you know, whatever, or you might learn something really personal, just like, I just got a new puppy, you know, oh my gosh, you know, adorable. And you're, you're talking about that a little bit. Those are the kinds of things that you could follow up with at some point, like, you know, you do your thank you note and you're, you're, you base that on like what they shared and how grateful you are and all of that. But then maybe a month later, you know, or three weeks later, whatever you come across a you know, some puppy training, you know, manual, or you look up something, best ways to train a puppy, well, who knows, right? And, and it reminds you of them, you know, you could shoot them a note easily and say, hey, I just wanted to follow up from last month. Thanks so much for, you know, spending time visiting with me. It was so beneficial. Came across this, you know, this puppy, whatever, and it reminded me of you. How's your puppy doing? Hope you find it beneficial or helpful. Sincerely, right? That's you helping them, not being clingy right? And, and chances are, if that were me, I'd be like, wow, that's really cool. That's really sweet of them. And it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to remind me of your name. It's going to remind me of, right, our connection, what we talked about. So it could also remind me of, it might be, you know, maybe I said I would do something and you're like, you know, and then it's like, oh, wait, I think I told 
her that I would connect her to Jane Doe in whatever. I need to do that. Who knows? I mean, it can, so that can be, I think, really recommended, right? Um, but just that, uh, you know, once in a while, or she took an article that you, that you found, a really, a new article or a new approach to monitoring and evaluation. You know, uh, you know I, I recall in my time visiting with you, you were, you know, mentioning how passionate you were, you know, I'm not sure if you've seen this yet, but it's a, it looks really interesting. Who knows? It's just something that you're letting them know you're, you know, you're thinking of them, right? So awesome. Um, so Welton, another question here, when we are allowed to go back outside, um, where is the best place to learn about in-person networking events? Yeah. Um, boy, I can't wait for that day. <laughs> I have a seven-year-old, so I'm also doing the, uh, the schooling thing, the 100% distance learning, so that's fun. But yes, once we're allowed to go back outside and be normal human beings, hopefully that day will come, right? Um, in terms of the best places to learn about in-person networking events, depends on where you're at, right? I mean, if you're in an urban area, there's going to be more. I mean, DC, I used to say to people all the time, and it's still, I would still stand by this, if you could practically go to a different networking, you could eat your way, like, you know, happy hour types of stuff and hors d'oeuvres around the city if you needed to, <laughs> you know, um, there's usually so many going on. And so you would, you know, how you're going to, how you're going to find out about them is connect with the different groups that you're interested in, right? Your affiliate group for Peace Corps, your regional one, right? Or your country of service one. There's oftentimes, you know, events or, you know, webinars or things like that that are going on as well. Those are great places to connect. And um, we'll find out about like, you know, when they can do the in-person, you know, oh, we're, you know, we're having a picnic here for, you know, the affiliate group, you know, RPCVs or NorCal, you know, uh, volunteers, Northern California RPCV group. Um, and you'll be able to connect like that as well. You're going to find a lot of those on, I mean, those kinds of activities on LinkedIn, um, some on Facebook too, whatever your groups are that you're following, right? Um, yeah, and, and yeah, I mean, that, those, those are the big ways, you know, to, to see there's so much that's now online um, with, you know, how you find out about these things. It's, it's a little different than it used to be. Um, you're not really perusing the newspapers anymore, looking for, you know, the ads and, <laughs> and things like that. It's a little easier. So, um, great. And let's see, Sam is asking, is it appropriate to reach out for a career chat with a company you've applied but didn't get a formal interview with? How could one approach that? Great. That's a very good question. I would probably do the following. So, so you, you had an interview. No, you didn't have an interview ever. So, um, so you, you applied for a job, but you didn't get an interview. Okay. And you got, did you get a, um, a, a message back saying, thanks, but no, th you know, thank you so much. We've gone with another candidate. Did you get something like that? Um, if you did, yeah, let me know if you can in the chat box, Sam. Um, if you didn't, and that's fine if you didn't as well. Um, I think it would probably depend um, how I would approach it. I would probably still look for some other contact that's in that organization or has contacts in that organization somehow, right? And the great thing about LinkedIn is when you do your search, right, it's not just your friends who work there, but then your friends' friends and their friends. So, it, you know, you get to that whole six degrees of separation, you know, the whole Kevin Bacon thing, if anyone's old enough to remember, um, remember that, um, you know, we're all connected, right? And uh, so, so I, would, I would probably try to do that. Now, if you had um, interviewed for a job and you didn't get it, right? I think it would also be fine to, like, I highly recommend that people write, and I call it a thank you for the rejection letter, you know, not facetiously, just saying something like, you know, when they, when they say that they went with another candidate, to reply and say, thank you so much for letting me know regarding your selection decision for the, you know, program manager position, you know, while disappointed to have not been chosen, I wish you the very best with your selected candidate, should you have future opportunities please keep me in mind as I remain deeply committed to blah, blah, blah. And I'm confident my X, Y, Z skills could, you know, whatever you could do that. Now in that you could say, I would welcome any feedback you might have for me regarding my interview to best prepare for future opportunities as I'm extremely passionate about where this organization, whatever, like you could say something like that. Now, they may or may not ever get back to you, but you put it out there and it's really professional the way it comes across because let me tell you, most people do not 
do a thank you for the rejection letter. They throw that paper away or, you know, in the, I don't want to say old days, but years ago, what, 30 years ago, whatever, 25 years ago, in, um, when I was in college, uh, when people would get, um, they, if they got a rejection letter, they brought that to the bar and the bar would give them a free drink. So, I mean, it was, you know, like you're being positive and you're being, you know, you're, you're thanking them for letting you know, and, and just, you know, asking in such a professional way that I just feel like it's, it's really, um, that's, that can be a good, um, a good way to do it. And it can lead to things. And, and here's the reality. Let's face it. Their number one candidate might back out. They might change their mind, the candidate, right? They might not clear the security clearance, right? Like, you know, Sam was talking, I think it was Sam talking about his job that, you know, the, the uh, waiting for, you know, top secret security clearance, whatever. So there's a lot of things that could happen. Not that that will happen. It won't, I'm sure, in your case. But, um, but you, you are then the next best candidate. You're right there, right behind. It's like, wow, she was so professional in that response like that really hits them and it might make them more open to give you some feedback and that could be some really valuable feedback for you um, for the next time an opportunity arises in the industry or in their you know organization even okay um yes let's see here uh let's see sure very helpful great okay <laughs> thanks um if there are any other questions um please put them in now that's just fine it's six minutes till um that is absolutely fine. I'm happy to, to stay on as long as people need. And if you do have questions related to um, informational interviewing or, or other areas even, that's fine, but um, happy to help. And this session will be um, recorded. So, and it will be put up, as I said in the beginning um, on the uh, YouTube playlist for uh, global reentry. So if you go into peacecorpconnect.org, you know, our website, and you go to the careers page, first you go to the resources for um, return Peace Corps volunteers, and then you go to the careers page, you can see actually a list of all of our um, former webinars that we've done. And if you click on those, it'll take you straight away to that link to that one. The two that were related again to this one were more um, the um, uh, LinkedIn, the one that um, Rhonda Anstead did, and I did one as well. There's two different ones um, so that you can li listen to. And then uh, networking in general, because that, you know, is a lot about what this is, this is about, which is expanding your network. So great. Ashley, thanks so much for coming. Appreciate you being here. Um, and uh, let's see, I, I'm going to, if there aren't any other questions related to the um, to this, I'm going to stop the recording and then I will answer other questions, including yours. Um, Rengia, I, see, I hope I'm saying that right. I'm so sorry. Um, so thank you folks for, um, for joining us. And uh, if you do have other questions, please follow, follow up with, uh, with me at careers at peacecorpconnect.org. Um, that would be great. And I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, stop the recording here and we'll go ahead and uh, answer any of the questions that you might have, okay?